Hi everyone and welcome to today's episode of At Peace With. You're listening to a MindPod podcast. Today I have the very lovely Jan Hart with me and the title of today's episode is At Peace With Yourself. Now, um, interestingly, Jan and I just had a little chat before we hit record and I'd kind of been thinking that this was an episode that I wanted to do and when I asked Jan what she wanted to talk about, (laughs) this was what came up. So how perfect is that? Um, So yeah, at peace with yourself. And I I think what we're kind of going to talk about today is, is what happens when we're not at peace with who we are. The journey that we've kind of, Jan and I have both been on in terms of seeing who we are and then what that means and how that's helpful. And also, I guess, the things that happen to us when we are not our authentic self and the difficulties that we run into. Um, I certainly know for me... You know, I I spent, I don't know, 20 years suffering on and off with anxiety and depression and all sorts of other things. And actually, very few people knew. (laughs) So when I kind of came out (laughs) and um, on social media in terms of, look, this is what I'm doing now, kind of helping people because this is what I really suffered with, a lot of people were quite shocked. And... I definitely know that I walked around, I I know that the perception that people had of me was really not me at all. And that was because I thought, um, I, I think for me, I thought I wasn't good enough. I thought I had to be some kind of made up self in order for me to fit into the world and for me to be accepted and what's really cool is as as I'm sure Jan and I will talk about is seeing what that is made up of so Jan um if it's okay I'd love you yeah um yeah kind of like talk about where you were what you found out and 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 what it means to be at peace with yourself Sure. And thanks for having me. Oh, well, so well. <laughs> it's lovely to be here. You're so welcome. Yeah. I suppose, you know, I, I go back even a bit further. Um, and I didn't realize this for a really long time, but what I can see now looking back is that I took on board very, at a very young age, that I was alone in the world and that I wasn't good enough. And it wasn't anybody's fault. It was just that was how I interpreted what was going on in life in my early years. And like you just said, I lived a life of being different things to different people and trying to be all things to all people. And I had a big, heavy trunk full of masks that I carried around with me. <laughs> yeah. And I was one person, you know, as a sister, as a daughter, as a friend, as a granddaughter, as, you know, a child in a classroom, as a child in a church, as a child in a speech and drama class, you know, it didn't really matter where I was or who I was with. I was always on my guard. Yeah. I was always tight and tense, but probably not always, but it looks to me that way looking back, that there was a pattern of just kind of holding myself together really, really tightly. And always being in my head. I, mean, I remember being in my head as a child. I, mean, I can remember even like being in conversation when I was maybe seven, eight, nine with friends out playing in a park. 
and I'd say something and somebody else would talk louder or the conversation would move on and there wouldn't be any engagement with what I said. And I can remember having thinking about it. They don't care about me. I don't really fit in here. They're only interested in each other. You know, they're kind of, uh, I'm here because of the sympathy vote kind of a thing, like the, the fact that they even allow me to be here. I never felt worthy of being anywhere. And like I say, it wasn't anybody's fault. It was just how I interpreted, but I didn't even know that I was stressed and anxious. I really didn't. Um, I just thought this is life. Um, life is hard. You have to figure everything out in your head. You have to control all these things. You have to show up in all these different ways and have all these personas. And as I got older and moved in more circles, I just created more and more masks. You know, when I went to work, I started going out meeting boys, or you know, it didn't matter. It just didn't matter. It was just I created a mask for what did I think. I needed to do and be in order to be okay in whatever the scenario was and whoever the people were. And what that led to over a lifetime, I suppose, was a lot of physical symptoms, a lot of labels, a lot of medical labels, disorders, chronic immune things, all generated from chronic stress. Um, and I still didn't make any connection. And I was big into self-development because I thought I wasn't okay. And I needed to fix myself and work on myself. And I was always working on myself. <laughs> yeah. And I think all that working on myself really added another layer of tension. And then I started having experiences of burnout. And I had repeated sessions of burnout because I didn't understand how it was happening and what was going on. And I turned to my career fairly early on, like in my 20s, as a way to be enough. And, you know, I'd get a job and the first thing I'd do in that job was look at what, what was the first promotion I could get. How could I prove myself to be good enough that they'd move me on? Um, I could never be where I was. I could never settle or relax. And I got wind of a corporate ladder that had to be climbed. And I thought I'd climb that. Surely I'd be good enough when I get to the top of that. And I spent the next 25 years climbing that ladder. And I did climb it and I did get up there. And I got more and more miserable the higher I got. I was more and more disconnected from who I was. And I reached a point where I just couldn't continue because I just didn't know who I was anymore. I was a million and one different people, but I had no idea who I was anymore. And I felt very lost. And, um, and I had always felt alone, but I had never felt lonely. And I started to feel very lonely yeah. and very lost. Um, and by luck, I suppose, I lost my corporate job in the recession back in 2009 and started on a different journey. There were no jobs and I created a business of my own, doing what I had always done, which was human resources. And slowly but surely, I built a little practice. And then I had another episode of burnout because I, even though I left the car, the left the corporate world, you know, wherever you go, there you are. And I took myself with me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And all the habits and all the thinking and all the ways of trying to cope and survive and be, I took them all with me and ended up burnt out again. And it was around the time of that burnout that I came across this understanding. Yeah. And it wasn't a, the clouds opened and the angels sang and I had a big <laughs> moment. You know, that didn't happen. <laughs> I haven't yet and I'm open to that happening. Yeah. <laughs> but it's been 
it's been a journey of being cracked open. And I think I had so many walls and gates and padlocks around my heart to protect myself that it, you know it took a while for them that the shackles to kind of fall away and at one point i remember saying to nicola who you and i both studied with that um i felt like i had just been cracked open there was a glimmer of light that i hadn't felt for a very long time and it just seemed the more i looked in the direction of that light the more light there seemed to be yeah. and and i was able to see that how it was an inside out job and how it was all innocent and how it was simply stories and narratives and perceptions and perspectives interpretations that i had innocently created and i lived from those stories i lived from them yeah. i bought into them hook line and sinker Dan, as we all do, like I know that yeah, everybody listening to this can, will be able to relate. Like we, we all do this. I have done this. I did this all yeah. my life. Um, because we don't know any other way. We we don't know that there is any thing different. And then suddenly you have the rug pulled out from under your feet because you realize that, like you just kind of mentioned, it's an inside out job. And, you know, what you're kind of like talking about there is there isn't anything outside of us that can hurt us. All of the hurt and the struggling and the difficulties come from inside, they come from our perception of of a made-up reality yeah and and um, i i blamed blame i don't know if blame is the right word but to me it looked like because of my childhood that's why i was the way i was because my mum really struggled to be a mum and i kind of dragged myself up that's why i was the way i was um and because of that, that meant I couldn't interact like other people in the world. Like when I started to see that <laughs> that wasn't true, that's yeah. kind of when everything starts to change. So yeah. tell, yeah. tell everybody what, because it sounds like you had some really kind of fixed and true ideas about who you were and they were full of labels and diagnosis and yeah stories. yeah what do you see about who you are now <laughs> yeah um what i see about who, who we all are now um is that We're spiritual beings living in human bodies, experiencing the human condition. And all the stuff that I just said, it can't be any other way because that's how we work. We're thinkers, all of us. We're born with this gift of thought. And what I see is that I just didn't know how to use it. And I was using it against myself, not using it for myself. And loving and supportive to myself. I used that gift to make myself very small and broken, innocently. Yeah. And so do so many other people. And what I see now is that because we all do that and we all think, we're all going to think sometimes in ways that help us and we're going to think sometimes in ways that we don't because that's part of the human condition. And Part of being human means that we have different states of mind and our mood can go up and down. And as they do, you know, the world looks different. I mean, different thinking comes. And I know now that when I'm in a low state of mood, that that brings with it piles of thinking, negative thinking, fast thinking. 
I'm, and that's when I start projecting out because that's another coping mechanism. If I'm feeling this bad, there must be something going on outside of me that's making me feel this way. But that's just another human tendency, and that's okay too. Yeah. And even though I continue to do that sometimes because I'm still human, knowing how it is and how it works is really helpful because then it's like getting on a roller coaster ride and, and knowing you're going to be terrified the whole time you're on it, but also knowing you're going to get off the other side when, when it stops. Yeah, it's like, I don't know, I'm sure you've heard this analogy, but I, I love it. it um, I think it's in one of Michael Neal's books, and he talks about before this understanding, we think that we're navigating life on a horse. And... <clears throat> And we've never ridden a horse before in our life and we get on this horse and it's massive and it's it's like uh, i don't know like it's just it's never been let out before and we're riding it really hard and it's exhausting it's tiring and we're kind of we're trying to like get it away from the 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 crevices and the 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 dangerous yeah. parts of the road and <laughs> and then we start to see how life works from the inside out and we look down we see that we're on a rocking horse <laughs> on a raft that's going down a river and actually there's going to be parts of that river that make us feel uncomfortable and frightened and scared but there's nothing we can do to to change the flow of the river so we may as well take our feet out of the stirrups let go of the reins and just sit back it's beautiful <clears throat> and it makes it so simple yeah yeah and, and i think i used to really not be happy about being human enough and everything that came with it yeah um and now i it's i'm starting to see more and more the beauty in the human condition i mean even when i came across this understanding i wanted to i wanted all the spiritual stuff oh i'm a spiritual being and and that did help and it made me when i realized that i'm a spark of the greater creative intelligence that creates all life that certainly did help in terms of making me feel like i was good enough <laughs> yes. um but i'm starting to see that the human part of us and the human condition is beautiful as well and um, and i'm starting to see how we can use our entire sensory system as a feedback mechanism um, but using it not to read it in a way that, oh my God, I'm feeling tight and tense, there must be something going on out here. But now it's like, oh my God, I'm feeling tight and tense. My thinking's getting all revved up back away, Jen. Yeah. Um, and there's beauty in that. And there's, even though it doesn't feel good in the moment, that icky feeling is your guide yeah. to help you realize that your thinking's just on wild again yeah I, oh, absolutely i see now that those years and years of struggling where my difficulties got more and more difficult it was my soul just shouting louder and louder and louder and louder at me and and it was like i was walking around with my fingers in my ears my soul was was wanting me to look here inside myself and i was looking everywhere else yeah. <laughs> but here it yeah. was it was it was trying to show me that that's not how life works like sending all these alarms i just i just kind of was ignoring them I, I, and and making them louder by thinking that there was something wrong every single time. Yeah. And when I first heard look within, I, I did look within and I got very introspective and I looked at all my pains and all my aches and all my tension and I kept looking at them. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I am looking within, but they're not going away. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I misunderstood. <laughs> yeah, oh, yes. Oh, I love that, Dad. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like I'm examining them. I, I'm re being really hyper vigilant here. I'm really in within. I'm within. Like, but it's getting worse, not better. <laughs> yeah. So, what is that like? Tell tell people listening. So, when we kind of say look within, what 
we're not saying you need to look deeper into your anxiety or no. <laughs> But it, it, well, it, it's more, it's kind of a journey from looking in your head all the time to looking in your heart and looking in your soul sometimes, <laughs> seeing if there might be something there to look at. Yeah. Um, because, you know, I know for me, you know, and I could, like I had years of suffering just like you did, because I didn't want those symptoms. I didn't want those sensations in my body. And I'd either ignore them or suppress them or push them away or fight through them or, but I certainly, you know, but. When we do that, they keep coming back because until we acknowledge them and be with them, like those feelings need to come up and be heard, whatever they are. That's why they keep coming back. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they can, I think one of the things that's been really helpful for me is that I see now that when we get ourselves stuck, and we all do, Nursing ourselves back to mental well-being is as easy as holding ourselves with a bit of care and compassion for what we're going through. Yeah. And just a little bit of care and attention and gentle compassion for ourselves goes a hell of a lot well further than ignoring and suppressing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like an acceptance of our humanness yeah. our humanness is something to be celebrated and i know that okay. that that may seem hard when you're really struggling and suffering but that's the way that, it is the way. the way into peace that's the way out of the struggling and suffering yes i remember someone saying to me and this is something that i have got really curious about and and that was um all we are is love, wisdom, and understanding, and the ability to be Aww. not. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. Love, wisdom, and understanding. That's it. Yeah. And everything else is a perception of our thinking, a result of our thinking, and it has nothing to do with who we are because we are love wisdom and understanding that's it yeah and while i used to feel really unworthy knowing what you just said i feel honored now that the greater intelligence of life has created this being that's called jang yeah to have all these experiences and life is such a gift and i didn't see that just being here and being alive is so wondrous and awesome just in itself. Yeah. yeah. Sydney Banks said, life's a contact sport. You get knocks. Yeah. And what that, for me, it's like, <sighs> the gift of being human is, is, is an amazing gift. But we don't, we don't go through life with, rose tinted glasses on like we get knocks we have difficult times we that's all part of being human yeah and it means nothing about who you are no but they're wonderful opportunities for learning and growth and more opening up yeah if we can accept yeah. that it's life just life happens yeah. And like yeah. you and I both know, sometimes you can and sometimes you can't. Yeah. And that's okay too. That's okay too. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that great? Oh, I know. Yeah. Wow. Jan. So no more mess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for today. Jan, You're if so everybody's welcome. listened and, and they'd like to talk more with you about at peace with being yourself. Where can yeah. they find you? Um, well, I guess the easiest place to find me is on Facebook under Jan Hart. Um, I, I, I talk there. And my business page is reconnectwithheart.com. And um, people can reach me there too. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, and pleasure. Thank you for everybody. And um, see you all very soon. Talk to you real soon. See you. Bye-bye. Bye, lovely. Bye. <laughs>
Bye-bye.